Let's ask our first in-studio guest today, Kevin Nixon, that Twitter, Twitter question. Uh, Kevin, former BYU basketball standout, also the father of current BYU basketballer Dalton Nixon. Come Monday, Kevin, BYU basketball will be fill in the blank. Dancing. Yeah. There's no doubt. Um, I think after yesterday, it's uh, pretty pretty evident. But, you know, I, I think – I think they were in before yesterday. I think they're. I don't want. I don't want to use a catchphrase here, but uh, their body of work kind of stands for itself. And 25 wins is is huge. And there's no reason they won't be dancing. Now, when you say you thought that they were in before yesterday, <laughs> here we you go. mean that you were like 85 percent sure that they would get in. And then after yesterday, which is today, you feel that they were. This is a lock, right? I agree with you completely. Okay. Right? Gotcha. Absolutely. Gotcha. You know, I, I've got my own little, you know, I, I just have to assume since a year ago you asked me to come on and kind of give you my thoughts as well. So I, I'm, I'm calling myself the resident bracketologist. <laughs> Kevin Nixon, the BYU Sports Station bracketologist. Okay. Nice. Minus the, the hairpiece. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, I, you know, a year ago I kind of said the same thing. You know, we, I felt really good about where we were at. I've got my index. I got a, the Nixon index. You got the Palm. You got the <laughs> Lunardi. You got ESPN, the RPI, KPI, whatever. I've got the Nixon index. How do we subscribe to the Nixon index? It's, uh, I'm, it, it's free, and you're going to hear it right here. <laughs> what I do is I take all 340 some teams. Okay. I take all the bad teams, and I just throw them out. Okay. okay? Nice. There you go. And then nice. you've got uh, really good teams and great teams. And if your team falls in that category, you're in the tournament. BYU is a really great team, really good team. They're in. Nice. They're in. That's it's, a simple algorithm right there. I, I mean, it, it was designed for the BYU fan. <laughs> you know, don't watch games. Don't worry about it. Just just enjoy the ride. Right. They're, they're a really good team. They're in the tournament. Nice. Kevin Nixon with us on BYU Sports Nation, former BYU basketballer, hit a 55-foot game winner in 1992 to beat UTEP in the WAC championship game to solidify the Cougar spot in the NCAA tournament. And that kind of brings us to our next topic, Kevin. Being on the bubble and not being able to control your own destiny, What what is that like as a player when you're going through that? Well, we, you know, after I hit the shot and we won the, the tournament, you know, we were in. We knew we were going to be in the tournament, didn't know who we were going to play. We'd end up playing LSU and Shaquille, which was kind of a – Tough draw. Good news, bad news kind of thing. Fun, <laughs> right. but yep. but quite the challenge. Um, the next year, we lost in the tournament, but we felt really comfortable with where we were at. We'd won our conference, won the WAC conference. So didn't really feel a lot of that pressure. But, uh, you know, as a BYU fan, we kind of sit here and we it it's stressful. I mean, it really is. And you hear, you know, only one top 50 RPI win. You, you hear, yeah. you know, bad losses compared to to you know other teams and and you know that's that's the things that kind of sit in your mind but but in the end I always feel like BYU is is kind of got the name talked about this last year we didn't have Kyle last year we have yeah. Kyle this year they didn't, they didn't have Kyle the torn ACL and they still got a 10 seed that's exactly okay. right exactly right so when you look at the whole thing I mean would you rather watch a a, a middle of the pack power conference team score 24 points by halftime <laughs> or would you rather watch BYU go score in the 80s and and who knows you might you might see Tyler Hodge go for 40 you might see Kyle Collinsworth get his seventh triple double that's a that's I mean, a legitimate argument absolutely a that is a great point how much more stress is it being a parent and kind of being on the bubble watch oh it's uh it's way worse I think <laughs> <laughs> it's way worse I because you want uh, you know you want so much for for your son and you yeah. you want him to experience the things that you've experienced and and it's not a given you know it's only only really good teams make it to to the NCAA tournament but you want him to experience that and have a chance to go and and feel what it's like to play in the NCAA tournament it's a special it's a special experience what's that so. conversation like when he's saying hey dad you know this and I heard this how hard? I mean, do you bite your lip or do you just tell like it is? Like, hey, no, man, you know, get, be prepared, dude. I got some <laughs> tissue for you just in case. No, I'm I, I'm a positive guy. I'm like, you guys are in. I felt this way a couple weeks ago, and even even after the Pepperdine loss, and you know, we obviously went on a eight out of nine yep. win run, and even after that, I felt comfortable. I felt good because you know, it felt like things were about to click. Yeah. And had the pieces in place. So, you know, I just told them, hey, whatever happens, happens. But, 
you know, you're in a good situation. You're on a great team. And in the end, I think you're going to be able to look back and say, wow, that was a great season and we deserve it. I remember as I was watching uh, in the early 90s the selection show and hoping BYU would get in. It has become just a crazy, crazy scene in terms of national media on, on the sports scene. So take, take us back to when you guys were waiting to find out where you were playing in the tournament to this situation now. How, how has it evolved? How do you view that, uh, that the scenario as it's evolved over the last 20 years? Uh, yeah, and it's it's been 20 plus years ago. It's 22 years ago was the last one, but uh, you know now they have these viewing parties, and you know the guys will go over to Coach Rose's house, and and they'll have cameras there, and they'll they'll show them whether or not they make the tournament, and when they get when they see the the see BYU on the screen and who they play, it's a uh, it's broadcast everywhere. Um, with us, it was. You know, we we came over to the Merritt Center and and we heard who we played. You know, it was just kind of a, <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. It was uh, I don't want to be anticlimactic about it, but it was I mean, it really wasn't. You know, it was like we knew we were in or we we felt like we were in, and and it was like okay, who do we play? And then the the next thing was all right, where are we going? When are we going? You know, just kind of like like that. But it was now it, it it's a spectacle. It's a it's a big deal. They start talking, I mean, Joe Lunar they have a Joe Lunardi for this, you know? Yeah. I mean they have bracketologists for that. And they start talking in January about these things. <laughs> yeah. Back then it was like, okay, who are the teams? Uh, they won their tournament. Okay, they're in uh who else? Eh, let's put those guys in. All right, let's go. Let's go play. <laughs> it seemed that way. It's I, I'm sure it was was a little more special than what I'm portraying, but so, similar, but it was, it was similar pretty to cool. your algorithm, right? It's, it's Absolutely, simple. that's that's probably why. Yeah, that I take team on sounds that. good. Let's just put them in. <laughs> put them in. So, so we obviously all agree that BYU is now a lock. Today they are a lock. Um, what kind of success can this BYU team find uh, in the tournament? I think they're playing really well. I mean, obviously, two weeks ago they beat Gonzaga on their home court. Um, Things didn't go as great in the second half in the tournament, but I think it was pretty obvious that even with things not going as well as they wanted, they were still in the in the game. Um, it was competitive for 32 of the 40 minutes. Yeah, and, and they're playing great basketball. So yeah. that's what you want to do. You want to be peaking at the right time. There's a lot of teams that uh, maybe peak in January and, and kind of tail off, and you, those are the teams whose bubbles are bursting. So I feel good about where we're at. Um, I think – Depending on matchups, I see us as a team that can win a couple of games, get into the Sweet 16. We've got the talent to do it. Here's something we have not addressed yet on the show today that uh, came up in ESPN's Bracketology with Joe Lenardi, and that is, as of this morning, Joe has BYU and Utah playing each other in Portland in the 5-12 game. And I think he's just he's got to be <laughs> fooling with us, you know? <laughs> But what if, what if BYU and Utah had a rematch in Portland in the 5-12 game? What's your reaction to that? Uh, that would just be, that would be so fun. I mean, especially in the West, in Portland, I mean, you'd get a lot of, there'd be a lot of Utes there, there'd be a lot of Cougars there, and it'd be, people would be talking about it a lot in in three days. I mean, it, <laughs> the, the hype would be pretty crazy, but uh, I think advantage BYU. We've played them once, and uh, I like the way we're trending. Um, they've, you know, they they had a, a good win last night. They worked uh, Stanford over pretty good last night, but have struggled the last six games, uh, losing half of those games. So I like the, the direction we're going. I think it would be a good match. I think they're a great team. Coach K does a great job, but I, I, li I would like our chances. But, it man, it'd be fun. Here's the thing. Does Utah, does Utah want to <coughs> play BYU? I can't imagine no. that Utah would be excited. No. Oh man, we drew BYU in the first round. Yeah, they wouldn't want to play us in the. They wouldn't want to play us because they we we've, we've already played them, and um, the fact that they beat us, you know, obviously we'd be a little more motivated. Not that you would need any more motivation in an NCAA tournament, right, but yeah. but um, but you have that uh, the rivalry. I mean, you got to think. I I we, I'd love to play them. I, I hope that's how it works out. I think it'd be a lot of fun <laughs> for a lot of different reasons. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I can't imagine them wanting to play us. No, I, I can't either. That would be so much fun just around the community. And, I mean, I, I remember when I played, and I don't know how it was with, with, with you guys, 
Um, but we had to wrap up the, the statues and, you know, just to be safe, right? They weren't coming down and painting stuff red. I am down to go and do some things, you know, <laughs> maybe not to, uh, uh, for fun, right? You know, not, nothing, nothing major. I don't know. Maybe get like some blue Kool-Aid and put and dump it in the pool or something. I don't know. I think it would be pretty fun. Give me a call. <laughs> right. Give me a call. I'm with you. Let's, let's link up after this then. <laughs> Kevin Nixon with us on BYU Sports Nation. Former BYU basketball player. His son Dalton plays on the current BYU. BYU basketball team. When you look at the progression that this team has made throughout the season, where do you pinpoint the one biggest improvement that the team in general has made? Wow, that's a that's a good question. I, you know, coach Rose spent much of the year trying to figure out kind of who was going to play, how it was going to fit in the system. A lot of new guys. Yeah. A lot of uh, young guys that he tried to to infuse into the into the program into the system. Um, you know, it's you know, it's hard for me to say this because it was it was when Dalton went from a starter to a non-player, but that was really the turning point. They found Josh Sharp stepped in and played great, gave him a spark. Uh, it seemed like about that time, Corbin started really catching on, uh, really feeling more comfortable about where he needed to be on the floor on both ends. Uh, rebounds started improving, block shots. You know, you could see the potential. Um, you know, Ty, Kyle, Chase, Skyler, all really solid and and kind of know their role and, and fulfill it great. Uh, Frank started stepping up. I mean, just, you know, guys started started playing better at that point. And, and I kind of point to that, to the Pepperdine game after the loss to Pepperdine at home when We've gone on a on a winning streak, and that's the thing. And they've we've won, we've played really well, and we're right where we need to be. So that I think that's the that was the turning point. So I I, I definitely think that the rebounding and, and finding you know the, the the mix with the bigs definitely helped um, as far as where they most improved at. Where do you think that uh, they can continue to improve, uh, especially going to the tournament? Well, it's I think for them it's always defensively. Yeah. Um, there's always going to be there's always going to be matchups that are going to you know, every team, every team he plays different and what they do is different. And so uh, game planning for them is going to be is always going to be the challenge. Um, you know, I think they would even admit they're not a great defensive team, but they've gotten better and they've improved. Um, but for them to have the success that they need, I mean, they can score. I mean, it's yeah. in ridiculous amounts. Um, defensively is is where they have to where they have to continue that improvement. Kevin Nixon, BYU Sports Nation resident bracketologist, self-proclaimed at that, <laughs> and uh, creator of the Nixon Index on BYU Sports Nation. We appreciate the time, man. Thank you.